Model steam engines for beginners, part 23. Some ideas on how to protect the water gauge glass tube. Most of the time, on full-size steam boilers, the water gauge is surrounded by toughened glass. And this is a great idea if you're close to the water gauge and it's a full-size one. Should the glass tube break, you would be protected to a certain extent from flying glass and boiling water. On a smaller scale, it's less important to have a gauge protector in my opinion although there is less chance of you fracturing the glass by hitting it with the shovel. This is my Castle Steam V6 boiler, a 6 inch diameter boiler with a very long water gauge. It's a dual fuel boiler, either gas or coal. I prefer to coal fire it for many reasons. The problem is the fire hole door and the water gauge are quite close together. And I felt the need to make a water gauge protector, and this is how I did it. I drilled two holes in a piece of brass that was 3mm thick. And once I drilled the holes, I chopped up the piece of brass to make two square pieces that fitted over the thread of the water gauge fittings. Then, being very careful to make sure that the holes were in the right place, I used a centre drill to drill part of the way through this 3mm brass. Not all the way through, there is a reason for this. I need to be able to insert four stainless steel rods which will be machined at the end to fit in these holes. It will make sense the further on I get with this job. This clip shows a test fit just to make sure that everything fits correctly. Initially this looks wrong because when I fully tighten the nut it holds the square part tightly in position on the fitting. But once it has the o-ring fitted inside the nut it won't go quite so far up. I'm going to use these red o-rings at the top of the square part that I've made. Once the o-ring seal is fitted inside the nut, once I tighten it in position, you will notice that there is still clearance between the square part and the fitting, which is now filled with an o-ring. I need to slot in four bars like this made from stainless steel. And it's a simple job just to lift each corner of the square part, slot in the bars. When all of the bars are in place, they look like this, and they're going nowhere. I have a large old steam boiler that came out of a railway carriage, and that has a similar arrangement, but there are many more bars, and it doesn't look very good. But when this is finally put back together, as you can see, it looks the business. Time to test it. Here's the water gauge, and here's the shovel and I'm not seeing much glass breakage. This is a shovel I use for firing this boiler, and it would be quite difficult to break the glass, unless I poked it through the bars, which I wouldn't do. This is a good simple way of making a water gauge protector. This next clip is a commercial water gauge protector. I bought this via eBay, it's designed for a model traction engine. It's a bit smaller than what I need for mine. But when I looked at this commercial gauge, it gave me an idea. I'm not going to fit any glass, because on the full size, it's definitely toughened glass. I know that, because I do have a set of full size water gauges. Whereas normally, on small models, it's picture frame glass, and I can't see that being very strong. Also, the arrangement for a traction engine is very different to the way the water gauge is secured to the back head of a railway locomotive. I came up with this idea for my 4.5-inch scale traction engine. I used two pieces of square brass, I've rounded the edges, and here they are in place. I machined the nuts to be quite a good fit in the holes in the brass. All I need to do now is fit a brass rod on each corner. I bought some brass rod that was 5 seconds of an inch in diameter, and in the lathe, first of all using a centre drill, and followed by a twist drill, I drilled the hole's tapping size for 6BA, and here I'm threading the hole using a tap 6BA. These images are moving about because this Myford lathe is sat on some shock absorbers. Originally the protector on this water gauge was a thin-walled, slotted brass tube held in place with two straps, and this was OK, but I was struggling to read the water level. Once I'd found the correct distance that I needed, and it took two attempts, I drilled and threaded the other ends of the four bars. 
Fitting the completed water gauge protectors to the traction engine along with the new glass was definitely the hardest part. First I fitted one brass rod, then another one at the opposite side, then I fitted the other two. At the top I'm using dome headed brass screws, which makes it very simple to remove and refit this unit. The good thing about this design is not only do the four bars protect the gauge glass from being broken, they make the entire water gauge much more rigid because unlike a railway locomotive, traction engine water gauges are not normally fitted directly to the back head. They usually have extension pipes, so this makes the whole arrangement much more rigid and therefore less prone to breaking. And that is it, a bit of useful information about making a different type of water gauge protector that not only protects the glass tube, it protects the gauge frame and keeps it more rigid. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.